All things have passed away, nor love has stayed the same. Your constant grace remains the cornerstone. Things that we thought were dead are breathing in life.
Shema. Is this on? Okay. Is this on? Is it on? Is it on? Okay. Hi. Um, so Jody just asked me to share what God has done in my life recently and um, just hope because there's a lot of hopelessness right now. Um, so a few weekends ago, I went to Louisiana and I went with two of my friends from school and we went to a conference called the LO Sister Conference um, that Sadie Robertson put on. And it was it was really fun. It was a really good weekend, but um, it was two weekend or two days long. And the first night, a woman named Jenny Allen spoke, and she talked about she spoke on lies and believing the truth versus believing lies. Um, it was a really really amazing message, and she talked specifically about how when we distance ourselves from others. Um, and we kind of seclude ourselves and don't let other people in on our burdens and our pain. Um, the only voice that we have is our own and Satan's because there's no one that's speaking truth into us. So she was giving this message and I was like, she is like looking at me right now. Like I was like, she is talking right to me. Um, because my entire life, like just the story of my entire life is just believing the lies that I've been told. Um, growing up, I just had a lot of really critical adults in my life, and um, specifically my father. He wasn't the dad that, or the father figure that he should have been. Um, in like my early teenage years, he and my stepmom became mentally and verbally abusive, and they were just spoke, didn't speak the truth over me, and spoke a lot of lies over me. Um, and so I kind of grew up all like even from really being like a really little girl, and just never believing that I was gonna be good enough for to deserve someone's love or um, that no one was ever gonna be proud of me or that um, I wasn't, I mean, any lie that you can think of, I probably believed it. Um, and when I was 15, I left my dad's house, moved in with my mom. I haven't really talked, I don't really talk to my dad that much, but even though I left this situation um, that was causing me most of the problems that I was facing, I didn't leave the lies that I was believing. So I still struggled with my confidence. I put on this facade that I was okay and that I was fine um, because I didn't want to look weak. And I thought if I spoke about things that I'd been through or um, things that I had dealt with or faced that I wasn't going to be strong. And then it made me strong to hide those things. and. Um, I didn't want to be weak. So, um, most of you know that in December, my cousin Caleb passed away in a car accident. Um, no, he was 18, he was a senior in high school, and that was obviously like a pretty shaking experience. Like, that was really difficult, really hard. Um, but I thought that, because Caleb has, I mean, there's this amazing story of, like, Caleb's testimony of how God saved him a year before he died and how he gave his life to Jesus a year before he died. And that is 
through that, I mean, awful situation, I saw God's faithfulness more than I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, but because of that, I thought, I'm a Christian. God saved Caleb. There's this really cool story. So I can't be sad. Like, I can't grieve. Um, which is kind of impossible to do. I mean, if you lose someone that you love, you have to grieve them. But it's just with Christ, that grief doesn't have to crush you. Um, so I kind of reverted back to, I want to be strong. I don't want to let people in. And I really cut myself off from everyone. Um, but I kept up this facade that I was okay and that um, I was fine and that none of this was hurting me or none of this was affecting me. And I secluded, I mean, exactly what Jenny spoke about. I really just shut myself alone because I didn't want anyone to see what I was actually going through. Um, so I dealt with all of that by myself. And then when you don't have people in your life that are speaking into you and speaking the truth over you, and you're only alone with yourself, you lie. And then you're only alone with Satan, who is the author of lies. That's all you're going to believe. So these lies that I had believed about myself since I was little, um, that God, through giving my life to him, had been trying to like rid me of and strip me of, they, they rose up again. And they were so, so loud because I didn't have anyone in my life that was telling me the truth because I pushed them all away. Um, and I just, I got to the darkest point I've ever been in, in my entire life. Um, I didn't talk, I didn't talk to the people who I knew would see that I wasn't okay because I didn't want them to know. I, I wanted to keep this, I wanted to be strong. I didn't want to be weak. I didn't want to show any weakness. Um, so I stopped caring about school. Um, the only reason I passed my classes is because other people did my work for me. I got like two to four hours of sleep in, a night because I would just, I would go home. I would go to school. I would go to work. I would go home, and that was the only time I was by myself. So that was the only time I could cry about everything that I was dealing with. Um, I would skip school, or I would I'd be late to school every single day because um, I couldn't get out of bed in the morning. Like, it was, I was just like, this is another day that I have to deal with all these things that I don't want to deal with. Um, and I really, I just got to this horrible, awful, awful point that all started from cutting myself off from everyone who cared about me and being alone with all of the lies and them just... I mean, creating more because I wasn't in this atmosphere where I could receive truth. Um, I got to a point where I, I didn't even think I was going to make it to be 18. Um, my cousin, like this, this boy that I'd grown up with and that I'd known my entire life and that I played with when I was little, he, he died before he could graduate high school. And I didn't think, I mean, I was so wrapped up in these lies that I believed that I didn't even think I would graduate. I didn't think um, I would go to college. I didn't think I'd get married. I didn't think I'd have kids because I didn't think I'd make it. Um, every time I got in a car, I would drive myself to work. I would drive myself to school. And there was just a voice that said, you're going to die this time. This time you're going to die just like Caleb did. What's, what's your family going to do? It's, it's going to break their hearts, their friends. Your friends are going to be broken, and it's going to be your fault. And I, I accepted it. Like, I, I just stopped caring about everything else because I was like, well, um, what's the point? Um, so I just got to this awful, awful place. And then um, that was from, like, December to the middle of the summer, and I kind of started talking to a few people that I was really close with um, about what I'd been going through. And they started speaking some truth into me. Um, so I wasn't as crushed and I wasn't as depressed as I was before. But I still, like, those lies were still so loud 
that I couldn't even identify them as lies. Like I had listened to them for such a long time that I could not even tell what the truth was anymore. So I go to this conference with two of my closest friends and we're there and Janice starts the service by asking us three questions and she asks us to write them down. And the three questions were, what are you longing for? What are you grieving? And what are you anxious about? So I wrote my answers down. What are you longing for? I said my family to be healed and to have a family that is joyful and loves the Lord. Um, what are you grieving? And I said the state of my family, um, my lost family members, the hopelessness that I feel like is my family is so wrapped in. And then I and it said, what are you anxious about? And then I said, will I ever receive the restoration that I want my family to have so much? And then she said, I was like, okay, I wrote them all down, like whatever, it's fine. And then she said, I want you to look to the person to you, like that you're sitting beside, and I want you to tell them what you wrote down. And I was like, um, no. I was like, I don't talk about this stuff. This, like, this makes me look weak. Like I was like, I don't, like, and I'm sitting beside one of my best friends. And so I look over at her, and I'm like, you can go first. And she, she said hers, and then I just kind of looked at her and didn't talk. She was like, are you going to talk, Carly? And I was like, okay. So I read them to her, and then they, kept, they were like, all right. And then they just had a few girls stand up and share theirs. And I, I honestly was, like, not listening. I was like, this is stupid. I was like, why did, they, why did they? This is not a counseling session. I don't need to talk about my feelings. I don't need to talk about what I'm going through. Um, so I just had a, like, I had a bad attitude about it. But then she started speaking. Um, and she was like, the reason that I made you guys do that is because you can't bear your burdens alone. You can't, um, you can't walk through. We weren't designed to walk through these hard things that you're going to go through by yourself. Um, she said a few things that I wrote down. Um, She talked about how important and freeing it was for us to share our burdens with one another and that God didn't design us to bear our burdens alone or walk through trials by ourselves. And then she said, when we allow ourselves to be alone and secluded, only, the only voices speaking to us are our own and Satan's. And that when we are alone in the dark with the devil, he can tell us anything he wants. Um, and I, I started listening because I was like, okay, you're probably, you're probably right. Um, and she said, there's like shy of heaven, there is nothing else that we can do with our burdens and our griefs and our trials other than to share them with others so that they can help us carry them. And so I started the night and I was like, this is dumb. I don't know why I just had to share these things about myself that I don't want to talk about to like bawl and crying. <laughs> I was sitting in the chair. I'm like, well, someone like pray for me or something because this was like the most convicting message I've ever heard. And um, I don't talk about anything I've gone through. So my friends are sitting beside me like, are you okay? Like, are you going to be all right? And then she said, Sadie came up on the stage and she said, um, just want you guys to think about if you got saved tonight, we're going to baptize people tomorrow. And when she said, we're going to baptize people tomorrow, I'm like, clearly the Holy Spirit just like impressed upon my heart. You're going to get baptized tomorrow. And I was like, why? Like, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. I've already been baptized. Um, and I just was like, I don't think I'm going to get baptized. And it was just like, we went, we went, like, and got milkshakes after. Like, we, like, the entire night, though, I just kept, like, God was impressing upon me. You're going to get baptized tomorrow. And I was like, okay. Um, I was like, I'm probably just talking to myself right now. And so the next day, they had a bunch of, like, little seminars and kind of, like, get-togethers in small groups. And then... Um, Sadie gave her message, and Jenny talked about lies and believing the lies, and Sadie talked about the truth, and she, the whole service was, um, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, and um, I, I'd heard that verse before, and I was like, well, yeah, the truth has set me free, like, Jesus Christ saved me from my sins, he set me free from my sins, but through that conference, that verse took, like, an entirely different meaning for me. Um, and she spoke, and she talked about like, her own story. I mean, it's, on, it's online. You can look it up and listen to the sermon. I don't really need to talk about it that much. Um, but she said, she prayed, and then she said, all right, I want you all to be bold. If you want to get baptized tonight, stand up. 
And I, just, I stayed sitting down because I was like, I'm not getting baptized. I've already been baptized. And my heart was beating out of my chest, like, it, like uncontrollably, um, as all these girls were standing up. And I was just like, you need to get up, Carly. And I, I like, just said, like, like in my head, why? Like, why do I need to be rebaptized? Um, I've been a Christian for like four years now. I didn't just get saved. Everyone's going to think that I just got saved. There's 2,000 people in this arena. I've been saved. I don't want to go up there and everyone think that I wasn't saved. I don't want my friends to think that I wasn't saved. Like all these things are going through my head. And I mean, God just said, that I, I want to set you free. I don't want you to believe the lies that you've been told or the lies that you've been believing anymore. And you're going to get in the water. You're going to be in the water as someone who has believed every single lie that Satan, that you've told yourself, that other people have told you. You're going to go under the water, and she's going to die, and you're going to come up, and you're going to be free. And then um, after that, I looked at my friend, and I said, I'm getting baptized. And I stood up, and I walked to the front, and 108 girls got baptized. Um, and so, like, we went and got changed, and then we came out, and um, it was my turn. They were baptizing two girls at a time. It was so crazy, so powerful. Um, and I got in the water, and I'm still, like, kind of thinking in my head. I'm sure everyone here thinks that I wasn't saved. Like, no one here knows really why I'm getting baptized. Um, God just kept speaking to me, like, this is how I'm going to set you free. And what better way to declare that you're going to walk as someone who's free and who doesn't believe the lies that have held you so tightly than to proclaim it in front of 2,000 other women. Um, and so I got in the water, and she said, do you believe Jesus Christ died for your sins and whatever? And she put me under, and then I came back up. And it was like more than I could ever ask for or more than I could ever have thought. Like that experience was so much more. And when I was in that spot, at the, like at the end of my school year last year, of just I felt like all of the life and all of the hope had been literally sucked. I had been sucked from my from my life, and I went under the water, and I came up, and God restored it, and He brought me back. I didn't think. After Caleb died and after I went through all, the, all these, like, tragedies that I had walked through, I never thought that I would ever be joyful again. Like, truly, completely just joyful. And I came up out of the water, and it was absolutely a feeling of complete freedom that I have never known in my entire life. Um, and... I expected that, right? Like, God said, this is how I'm going to set you free. Like, I trusted the Lord. I was like, okay, this is how you're going to set me free. I'm going to do it after two days of arguing with him about it. But um, when I came up out of the water, too, it was literally like I'd been baptized in joy. Like, not, it was not fleeting. It was not circumstantial-based. It was absolute joy. Like, I was so, like, bubbling over. Um, and then... I wasn't expecting that. Like, that's just something God did. And the other thing he did, and I, I don't know if I'm even going to be able to explain this if you haven't walked through it, but every day I would wake up, and I had to deal with the pain of not having a father, um, feeling like I was not loved by my dad or feeling like I had been rejected by my dad. And I thought, I honestly just thought that was, like, the, my cross to bear. Like, that was what Christ had given me to trust him more. And that every day I was going to have to get up and say, like, God, I trust you. You are my father. Um, and I, I, not that I didn't believe God could heal me, but I didn't. I just thought that was something that he gave me to walk through. And I came out of the water, and it was like no, none of my circumstances changed Um my cousin still died in that car accident. Um, I have still walked through, I mean, from being little to all, like, being 17 now, all of the things that I've walked through, none of that changed. My family still, I mean, I still don't talk to my dad. Like, 
he's still not a Christian. My family's still dysfunctional. Nothing has changed, but I'm not crushed anymore. Like, I have joy that overflows, and um, I don't struggle with that pain of feeling, I mean, all of these lies that I believe, I don't, I don't believe them anymore, um, and that just the pain of not having a father, the pain of not, my father not caring about me or loving me the way that he should have, I don't deal with it anymore, um, and I came up out of the water, yeah, and God did all of that for me, and just, I'm just one little dip under the water, and like, it was a complete, like, restoration of hope, like, God took um, it, the emptiness and the darkness and the pain and the lies, and he took all of it away and replaced it with joy and with hope and with peace and fulfillment. And um, it was absolutely, completely changed my life. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you all and just that there's hope outside of what you're walking through right now. And Jesus doesn't want you to walk in darkness by yourself. He doesn't want you to walk and be a prisoner to all of the lies that you've been told. And he wants you to walk in freedom because he is the truth and he wants to set you free. And he can do it. I mean, he did more than I thought was even possible. Um, and truly, like, I mean, when I got saved, my old self died, whatever. It happened again. My old self died again the night I was baptized, and a new person rose, and a new creation rose that, like, has I haven't experienced Christ in, in his restoration in such a way in my entire life than I did the night I got rebaptized. Okay, so with that, I just feel really compelled that um, the Lord is speaking to us through Carly. Every single person in here has believed lies. And you're right, in the darkest corners of our um, room where we pull away from the people who love us, that's where that darkness comes rolling in, right? So two things that I feel like the Lord is really challenging us tonight is, one, obedience. It wasn't the water, or it wasn't the fact that she was in Louisiana that, and that got baptized and came out. It was obedience. She took a step of faith. She heard Christ saying, I need you to do this, and I'm going to set you free. It can be really, really simple. Like, I need you just to... Pray. I need you just to share with a friend that I believe in Jesus Christ. Today in Sunday school class, two young men said, you know what, I don't really recall a time where I surrendered my life to Christ. I, I'll do it. Let's do it right now <laughs> to say the sinner's prayer. So obedience. God wants our hearts and he wants obedience. And then second of all, we need to share our burdens with friends. Don't believe the lie that there's nobody around you that cares. There's somebody around you that cares. There's somebody in this room right now that cares and wants to share your burden. You're right. God created us for a relationship, right? And so tonight I want to challenge you. One, two, we're going to pray and just ask God, like, God, what do you what do you want me to do to get closer to you? What do you what are you telling me to do? How do I get free? What do you what 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 can I do? And two, I want you to share your burden with someone in this room tonight. I want you to just reach over. Yeah. Carly, it may have seemed like Carly had everything together. It may seem like your buddy has everything together. Every single one of us has a burden and we're gonna share it, okay? So with that, let's um, pray. Jason, will you lead us in prayer? And um, we're just going to pray tonight that God speaks to us 
God wants in, to encounter. We, he wants us to have encounters, conversations with him, right? So we're going to pray that and pray that God gives us a friend to help us carry our burdens, okay?